All right, so we have a, I think, an interesting move here. Mike McGlinkey, uh, the you know former good starting right tackle for the 49ers. Sometimes 49ers fans got frustrated with him, but for the most part, I think he was good uh, in his tenure there in San Francisco. Uh, and again, offensive lineman, thankless job. Oftentimes, you get criticized by your own fans just because you know they only notice you when you screw up. But I think as a whole, he was good. Signs a deal with the Denver Broncos. A bit of money. Five-year deal with an average of $17.5 million a year for McGlinky, who, uh, you know, to me, this is the Broncos trying to Sean payton their roster. Sean Payton has always valued the tack, uh, the offensive line position in general very highly. He's, they already signed Ben Powers. Now go out and get McGlinky, uh, and they even, you know, signed Jarrett Stidham, which there's some funny, uh, you know, jokes out there of more help for Jarrett Stidham, all that stuff. But the reality is, uh, at least for now, this is Russell Wilson's team. So they're trying to, you know, make it, more, uh, I think, what Sean Payton likes to do with his, uh, you know, units, which is he likes to have a good offensive line, have a good quarterback, and then he trusts himself that he can scheme up guys open, uh, you know, scheme guys open, excuse me, uh, in the receiving game. He trusts that his scheme will work as long as it has time to work, and it's hard to argue with him with the results he's had so far. So it's a very fascinating decision. The move itself, I think, uh, you know, again, we're going to get to the film in a second, talk about what he does, what, what McGlinky does well, and uh, you know why he could fit well in this offense. But uh, just in terms of this contract itself, personally, I'm never a huge fan of these deals. I always kind of like taking a player who's getting a player who's slightly less valuable, but you usually you can get them for a lot cheaper. Uh, you know, you can usually get solid veteran offensive linemen for like five, six million a year. I've always been a fan of get those guys. Don't necessarily go after, uh, you know, a top end guy. Guy. But again, and, and you know, he's not really a top end guy. And it's not getting paid like a top end guy. He's getting under $20 million a year. Top guys tend to get more than that. But he's kind of one level below it. He's getting paid one level below it. And he should perform one level below elite, which is, I think, what they're hoping to see out of him. So again, uh, you know, there's, there's intrigue there. And especially in a situation where, you know, for Denver, they need to see what they have in Russell Wilson. They have some cap space. They, you know, entered today with over 30 million in cap space. So spend it. Don't just, you know, sit on it. Sure. Uh, maybe you'd love a good receiver. Not really a lot of great options out there. So get the tackle instead. And again, for Sean Payton, this is exactly how he likes to run his offense. So I think it's a really interesting move. Let's talk about the player itself, though. Let's get into uh, Mike McGlinkey and himself and what he brings to the Broncos. Let's start off here before we get into the film with Mike McGlinky. Let's talk about the uh, this is the PFF page for his you know free agency uh, stuff where he was PFF's 11th highest rated free agent that was on the market. Uh, you know they projected a 16 million dollar a year deal, and you look at his over towards the right uh, kind of his PFF grades. He had a career year in 2020 where in over a thousand snaps he was the 19th highest rated tackle. Uh, since then, maybe not quite been that good, but it's still been a you know what uh, top four. 40-ish tackle for each of those years. So he's kind of a, you know, for a right tackle, I think that's pretty good. He's kind of maybe a, you know, top half of the league right tackle, which there's definitely value in that. But let's get into the film. Let's start off with this play. I think the film, uh, you know, will really show us who he is as a player because I like him as a player. I do. I think that he's he's solid. And here's a good example where he's going to be blocking one on one against a defensive lineman, an interior defensive lineman. Uh, this is actually Sue. And watch what he's going to be able to do. Watch as Sue's going to try to overpower him, and it's just straight up not going to work at all. I mean, McClinky is able to completely win that one on one matchup. He has the strength, and again. This is what you look for in tackle play, right? It's less about, you know, are you, you know, dominating guys? Can you pick someone up uh, with one hand and throw them 40 yards backwards? Okay, that would be very impressive if you could, but most guys can't. What you really care about is how often are you winning? What's your consistency in winning? And I feel like he has pretty good consistency in winning. Going over here, it works in both the running game and in the passing game. This is going to be uh, the run defense. You see that once again, it's going to be a one-on-one -on -one block right here. And watch how he, again, is really able to uh, you know push Sue out of the way. He clears up a running lane for McCaffrey to be able to run through. And again, it's worth mentioning with the outside zone that San Francisco you know runs, that McGlinky had a bit of a tough uh, task, I think, where he has to be able to you know make sometimes, sometimes he's the guy who's making the key block as opposed to other run schemes where it's the, you know, the, a guard potentially that's having to make the, the key block. Well, you know, a lot of times for tackles, all you care about is the... Uh, pass blocking. That's all people tend to pay attention to. 
However, he can run block very well as well, and you've, he's shown that, in my opinion, in San Francisco. This play is going to be another example where you could say the last two plays, okay, going up against Sue, who isn't really what he once was, fine. But I still think that, you know, again, there's some value in what he was able to do. But also, he had to go up against tough competition at times as well. Like, on this play, going up one-on-one -on -one against Hassan Redick. Also, I think he might have moved a little bit early, but not early enough to get a call. So, you know, there you go. But anyways, watch what he's going to do here. Right off the bat, you see Redick is a, just uh, creating contact right away, right? Kind of runs right into him. Usually, he likes to use his speed. But it seems like he's kind of trying to draw McGlinky in a little bit and then try to get to the outside. Seems like that's what he's going to try and do here. However, when he does disengage and try to get back to the outside, McGlinky stays with him the whole way, is able to make that block consistently. So, again... Uh, consistency, right? And consistency against tough competition, that's what you want to see. But there's also plays like this, where sometimes it's less about, you know, the blocks that you're, uh, less about the guys who you're blocking, and more about the scheme and the situation and things of that nature, where what's going to happen on this play is it's actually a pretty clever concept by Philadelphia. So they have Fletcher Cox lined up on the outside and Hassan Reddick lined up on the, uh, you know, inside lined up towards the guard on this play, but they're going to then twist and the, you know, they'll both go basically go back to their typical position, which is something I don't really see too often, but it makes a lot of sense in my opinion. A lot of times when you see this, basically what happens is you'd have Reddick on the outside and Fletcher Cox on the inside and you just have them basically switch positions on that play. Well, this time they're switching where they're lining up, but then going to go back and play their natural position. Really clever idea here by Philadelphia, I think. So, you know, it's tough for McGlinky to be able to block it. Watch how one this play begins. So he first makes sure he's blocking Fletcher Cox. I don't think he saw that this was coming, but quickly realizes, okay, I got to pass you off to the guard and then get over and block uh, Hassan Reddick quickly because we all know Reddick is very fast. As you see, he is able to get over, although, you know, Reddick definitely still was able to come in and help make that play. Uh, so, you know, it was not a dominant win or anything. I think you could argue either way, if this is a win or a loss, I'd still consider it a win though. I think that he did a good job of just giving Johnson enough time to make the throw. And I think if there wasn't pressure from the other side of the uh, screen on that play, I do think that it's not uh, it's not a disaster in that scenario. Uh, you know, and uh, unfortunate that it happened that way, you know, that he uh, Johnson kind of got sandwiched there. But as a whole, I think it goes to show that McGlinkey can read plays well. Well, he can run block well and he can pass block well. He's a good player. Again, is he a is he Trent Williams? No, he is not. But you know what? No one is Trent Williams other than Trent Williams, right? You know, you're get, you don't typically don't get those guys on, in the free agency market. But McGlinky, uh, a very good dependable tackle, uh, and I think that's what they're getting uh, with this contract. But that's what I think. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts on Mike McGlinky? Uh, always love hearing from you, and of course, as always. Thanks for watching.